Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Shadowraith and today we're going to be talking about the top three beginner factions for 40k that can also be competitive. Now the parameters for this top three are that they have to be quite easy to use because you're a beginner. Um, they've got to have a competitive edge to them so there is a way of being competitive and not losing to people especially if you're local gaming club are quite competitive um, but being simple at the same time so it's not gonna blow your head off when you try and think about what you have to do and I am gonna put it in here rule of cool what what I deem quite cool a cool faction um, yeah that's that's the parameters so obviously this is completely my opinion and um, please let me know if you think I'm I've missed something out or if you don't agree with one of the factions, absolutely fine. I'd love to have a chat about it. I love talking about Warhammer 40k. Right, let's jump straight into it. In the number three slot, we have Astra Militarum. Right, I know a lot of people might disagree that they're bottom of my list. The only reason they are is because they can get quite confusing. They, with the orders you have to do, um, it's all about planning what orders are best when and where um, but other than that I mean there's a lot of bodies you can potentially have to move around a lot of factors so it's not a super elite army but it can be so it did make it on the list surely because you can play it however you want you can go super heavy like mad just spam tanks and I have seen tank lists win tournaments I really have a close friend of mine has won three tournaments with a tank list playing as Katachan. So the Katachan um, Regimental Doctrine basically, I mean, increases your guardsman's strength. Plus one, so the strength four. Awesome. Cool. If you wanna if you want guardsman, that's a nice little bonus. You'll be killing stuff easier in combat. But this is the real one. So any randomly determined amount of shots for a weapon. So heavy D3, heavy D6. You can re-roll one dice to determine how many shots you get. Because because some um, weapons have heavy 2D6. So you can only pick one of them to re-roll. So if you roll a 6 and a 1, re-roll the 1. And that works really well with tank lists. So I'm going to put it out here. I think the tank list is the way to go. Money-wise, it could be quite expensive. But it's so powerful. It really is. You can do so much damage in turn one. You can wipe people off the board if you want. It just, yeah, if you roll well, you really can wipe people off the board. So with that, you want, um, I mean, the standard battle cannon on a Lehman Rust uh, uh, main battle tank is fantastic. It's, it's pretty stock standard, and it can dish out damage. You can deal quite a few shots. Along with a couple of them, I would bring some artillery. I personally like the manticles because, I mean, heavy 2d6 shots, they're, they're pretty nasty, super high strength, and yeah, they just kill whatever they shoot. And especially if you can reroll one of the dice that you determine how many shots you get. I mean, granted you only get four shots per game, but I mean, I shooty lists don't, t you're either in combat by that turn, in which case you've probably lost or the enemy haven't got much left on the board in which case your Lehman Russes can deal with them so fantastic I mean you can take an infantry screen so a couple of squads of guardsmen just to pop in front of your tanks just so if they do have something like Tyranids and gene stealers that can do a turn one charge you have got a buffer so they have to charge them just to ensure there is an like more than three inches between your screen and the tanks behind because otherwise they'll just pile into your tanks so yeah that's number three slot that's what I'd go with. Catachans go tank heavy. Absolutely. Moving on. The number two slot goes to Death Guard. Right. My reasoning behind this is A. They're really cool. I think they've got some cool models. Some of them might seem a bit cartoony, but I think they're quite fun to paint. But you also get them in the um, starter box. Dark Imperium, First Strike, all of those 
first buy boxes. So if you if you own any of them, you've you've got part of an army good to go. Now, the reason that I've picked this rules wise is because they are tough as nails. They are really tough. They're basic space marines or chaos space marines. Well, plague marines technically are toughness five, and that makes a massive difference when it comes to bolters, things like that. The strength four weapons, <laughs> even strength five weapons, instead of wounding on threes, they're wounding on fours. Bolters wounding on fives. It's amazing. You've got your three up power armor save, and then after that. You've got a 5 up disgustingly resilient save. So this protects you not only from failed armor saves, but there are armies out there that just shoot out mortal wounds. So if you're going against a heavily psychic army who like dishing out damage via mortal wounds, you have got a save against it. Now, as for the lists, um, you can just go for um, the Plague Marines with the... Uh, Malefic Blight Haulers. So, this is a combo I've seen done where basically there's they, the Malefic Blight Haulers have an aura around them, which gives every infantry model who are Death Guard a cover save, which means you now have Plague Marines who have a 2 up save followed by a 5 up invun save. Yeah, that's pretty gross. Along with the spells they get, you can also make them. Minus one to hit in the shooting phase and the combat phase, mind you. Uh, one squad. And you can make them plus one to wound with a stratagem, Veterans of the Long War, and Blades of Putrefaction, so you can make them plus one to wound in the combat phase. You can also stack that with Veterans of the Long War. If they've all got Plague Knives, which they will do stock, Blades of Putrefaction states that every roll of a 7 plus, so basically if you have Blades of Putrefaction and you have plus 1 to wound, you roll a 6, that counts as a 7, obviously, you, de you deal a mortal wound in addition. Now, if you add Veterans of the Long War on top of that, it suddenly becomes every 5 and 6 does a mortal wound. So you can, you can go combat heavy with some of your squads of, of Plague Marines. It's yeah, it can be quite effective, and they're really tough. The other option you can go is the Poxwalker list. Now, for this you want Typhus, because it's Death Guard. Typhus is awesome, just on his own. But his aura ability is, um, I believe it is 7 inches, makes Poxwalkers plus 1 strength, plus 1 toughness. So they're now strength, uh, strength 4, toughness 4. Okay. You can also then cast a spell from Typhus, because he's a Psyker, to make them an additional plus one strength and plus one toughness. So you now got strength five, toughness five, Poxwalkers. Bearing in mind, these models are now five points a model. You can only have them a squad, a squad up to 20, but they're still five points a model. And then, if you chuck them into combat, you can blaze a putrefaction, so they're plus one to wound, veterans of the long war, and I've said this in my previous video, you can give them Veterans of the Long War. If I'm wrong, do say, but as far as I'm aware, it is legal. So, you're wounding Space Marines on twos easily. You don't need the both if they're toughness five. You can wound on twos if you stack both of those abilities on them, the spell and the stratagem. You could be wounding Knights on threes. Yeah, two attacks each. Wound knights on threes. And the other thing I would recommend bringing with the Poxwalker list is a Tallyman. So you get a chance of getting command points back, but yeah, yeah, yeah that's not what I'm worried about. It's, it's handy, but it's not what I'm worried about. It is the fact that he lets you reroll all failed hit rolls for everyone within seven inches of him. Yeah, you've, you've suddenly got Poxwalkers who are strength, to, uh, strength and toughness five, plus two to wound. Who are hitting on fours, two attacks each, re rolling. Yeah. And you're winning most infantry on twos, most big things on threes. It's. Yeah, that's. It's really strong. It is really strong. 
and it's really really viable I've seen people take this list to the top people I uh, I've spoken to about anyway there that's the main that's the main points of death guard there and they're quite easy to use you just need a couple of spells and yeah you can go just elite or you can go spammy pox walker list the number one slot Okay, this is a little bit different, but bear with me. The Dawn Eagle Jet Bike List for Adeptus Custodes. It's really, really simple, and it's really, really strong. All you want is at least a Shield Captain on Dawn Eagle Jet Bike, depending on how many points you have. And then the rest Storm Eagle, is Storm Eagle Jet Bikes. You can, I'd, I'd primarily give them the Hurricane Bolters just to churn out shots because you could struggle with hordes because they're an elite army, so the uh, Hurricane Bolters will deal with that. And anything your Hurricane Bolters can't deal with, so like heavy armor, you, you can kill in combat because they are absolutely crazy in combat. I mean, every custody hits on a 2 plus, and if they're near a shield captain, they're re rolling ones. So yeah, it's um, I, I believe it's twelve shots a bike at rapid fire range. So if you've got squads of three flying about, or squads of six, imagine the amount of shots you'll be uh, shooting out at your enemy before you even get into combat, and then you charge in, and you, but your basic dudes have four attacks each, four attacks each, hitting on twos, rerolling ones if they're in range of a shield captain, wounding, uh, well, their, their strength five. Which is really really strong. Um, plus one with the interceptor lance, and you can re-roll failed wound, wound rolls if you charged that turn. So yeah, plus one to, uh, strength, minus three AP. So yeah, getting rid of that armor. D three damage each. So even a squad of three, it's fantastic. And I'm keeping it simple here. Literally, shield captain on Dawn Eagle jet bike follow around the squads to give them the uh, reroll ones and they're, they're pretty solid in combat themselves and yeah shoot shred things to bits with the um, hurricane bolter which is 12 shots at rapid fire range so 12 inches yeah you can't go wrong with that and they're tough as nails they've got four wounds each two up save four up in van it's yeah that's that's what I'd do. Anyway, I've seen this list definitely win tournaments, and that's why it's in the number one spot. It's simple to use, and it's really effective. Anyway, that's my list. Thank you ever so much for watching, and if you could be so kind to give this video a like, that would be a massive help, and I will thank you a thousand times for it. So I hope you have an absolutely lovely day, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.